Welcome, Pleasant Grove family, and thank you for joining us for today's virtual worship experience. We are happy to have you with us. Sing along with our praise team and get into the word with our pastor, Dr. Sammy J. Dow. Leave a comment in the thread and let us know where you're worshiping from. Remember to like, share, and subscribe at The Grove Atlanta on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Vimeo, and YouTube. At The Grove, we are transformed people transforming the world. Hey, family, let's get ready for worship. Oh, come on, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Come on, somebody, put your hands together real big and give God a great praise. If you're excited to be in worship again, come on, let's open up our mouths and begin to bless the Lord even now as we press our way into his presence, declaring that he's a great God and he's been faithful to us over the course of another week. We magnify and bless him and we are excited to worship together again even in virtual space this is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it come on family let's worship the Lord together come on, let's bless the Lord come on put your hands together let's celebrate Jesus celebrate Jesus Celebrate Jesus, the man who died for us. We love you today, Lord. Here we go. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross. My debt you paid from the cross to the grave. From the grave to the sky, Lord, I lift your name on high. Help us lift Jesus, lift Jesus, lift Jesus. Here we go. Lord, I lift. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad. I'm so glad you Let's do it again. Lift your, your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praise. Lord, I love to sing your praise. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you're in my life. Come on, tell them I'm so glad you came to save us. I'm so glad you came to save us. Here we go. You came from heaven. You came from heaven to earth. To show the way from the earth. Lord, 
Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I lift your name on high. Nobody like Jesus, Lord, I lift your name on Cause he's worthy to be lifted. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I lift your name on high. Last time, Lord, I lift. Jesus, lift Jesus with your mouth. Lift Jesus, lift Jesus because He's worthy. Lift Jesus, lift Jesus. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we love you. Lord, we lift you. Lord, we exalt you because you're worthy. Jesus, lift Jesus, lift Jesus just for who you are in all of your glory. Yes, God. My heart sings holy, holy. You are everything I need you to be. You are the great. Sing, Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. Yes, I love you. Yes, I love you. Come on, sing with us. Tell them how I love you. How I love you. I really love you. I really love you. Let's sing it again. Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. You're not singing to me, you're singing to the great I am. Oh, yes, I love you. Yes, I love you. Tell them how I love you. How I love you. I really love you. I really love you. Now we're going to tell them why. Just for who you are. Just for who you are. Yes, Lord, in all of your glory. In all of your glory. My heart sings. My heart sings. Holy, holy. Holy, holy. Yes, Lord. You are everything. Everything. I need you to be. Who is he? You are the great. I 
God praise you may be seated if you're physically here in the sanctuary we're so grateful to God for each and every one of you joining us participating in today's worship experience where we literally gather in virtual space to celebrate this God we serve who is the great I am we give God glory we give God honor we give God praise for another opportunity to simply declare that he's been better than good to each and every one of us and we don't take it for granted that he has graced us with another opportunity to worship him together in spirit and in truth well listen we want to say welcome to all of our first time visitors if you're worshiping with us virtually for the very first time we want to say to you welcome to the grove we are so excited to have you sharing with us virtually today come on we can celebrate god for them Here's what we want you to do. We want you to leave us a comment. Let us know who you are, how you found out about us, who invited you to share and worship with us, where you're worshiping with us from. And everybody there in the comment section that is worshiping virtually with you wants to say hello to you, give you a big old virtual hug, and let you know just how excited we are to have you sharing with us for today's online worship experience. Church family, I'm so excited as we continue our journey through the Psalms of Ascent, Preparing ourselves for our return to in-person worship experiences this fall we believe God is going to meet us in a strong and powerful way don't forget make sure you're connected with us on all of our digital platforms digital outlets you see that information there on your screen you can also visit our website pleasantgrove.org scroll to the bottom subscribe to our email newsletter you can also text the word, the Grove ATL, all one word, the Grove ATL, to the phone number 484-848. That adds you to our mobile messaging list so that you can get updates as well. I know uh, we've gotten your calls, we've gotten your emails. Well, he said we're coming back, when we're coming back. When you go and follow us on all of those digital platforms and outlets, subscribe to the newsletter, subscribe to the mobile list so that we can share the information with you about what's happening in the life of our church. And don't forget today we celebrate the Lord's death, burial, and resurrection together immediately following the sermon. So make sure that you gather your family ready, your elements for communion from the couch. I want you to make sure in addition to that that you are being safe even as you celebrate 4th of July. I want you to be safe. Do whatever you are choosing to do to celebrate with friends and family but please be safe and pray that God will continue to cover you and we're excited because in just a few short days our midweek Bible study will relaunch in virtual space amen that's beginning Wednesday, July 14th, virtually. Our series is entitled The Essentials of Being a Disciple, Building Our Lives in Christ. Make sure you head over to the website, pleasantgrove.org, and get registered today so that we can make sure you get that information. And now we prepare ourselves to worship the Lord through giving. Amen. We worship the Lord through giving. We get excited in moments like giving because we are striving to be a 100% tithing congregation, which means that each and every person connected to, associated with our church, we strive to honor the Lord with what he requires of us as it relates to our giving. 
a dime from every dollar, 10%, the first fruits of our increase, we bring into God's house so that there will be resources in God's house to fulfill the mission and vision that God has given our church. Then above our 10%, we bring an offering. That's our token of appreciation and gratitude to God for who God is and all that God continues to do in and through each and every one of our lives. Thank you for over the course of this pandemic for your continued faithfulness, generosity, maturity, discipline in our giving, believing that when we do as God has required of us, he'll literally open the windows of heaven and pour us out blessings that we just won't have room enough to receive. There are a number of ways that you can give here at The Grove. You can give traditionally via cash, check, money order. You can do that. You can put that in an envelope. You can mail that to us, or you can drop it here in our mailbox slot. We're located at 566 Whitlock Avenue Northwest, Marietta, Georgia, 30064. Or you can log on to our website, pleasantgrove.org slash give. You'll see options there for how you can give. Or you can download the Givelify app on your mobile device. You can download the Givelify app and in three quick clicks, once you're set up, you'll be done. You can set up recurring gifts and reminders about your giving. So that way we prioritize God in our giving because we know he's been so generous and gracious to each and every one of us. Well, come on, as you're continuing to prepare your gifts, let us recite together now our radical generosity confession. And we read together, I bring all of my tithes and offerings into the storehouse so that there will be meat in God's house. I believe that the windows of heaven will be open and blessings poured out that I won't have room enough to receive according to Malachi 3 and 10. I am a cheerful giver and bring my tithes and offerings willingly according to 2 Corinthians 9 and 7. I will practice radical generosity and random acts of kindness in my family, my church, and my community. I decree and declare that my life and the lives of those connected to me will be transformed because of my obedience in Jesus' name. Amen. As we continue worshiping the Lord through giving, our music ministry comes now to prepare us for today's message. <laughs> the strength of my life he moves all pain misery and strife he promised to keep me never to leave me he's never ever come short of his word i've got to fast and pray stay in the narrow way oh i'll keep my life clean every day i want to go with him when he comes back i've come too far and i'll never turn back god is the joy the joy and the strength of my life he moves our pain, moves all pain misery and strife. he promised to keep me to keep me never to, never leave. to leave he's he never, ever, never ever 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 come so i've got to fast and pray Stay in the narrow way. I'll keep my life every day. I want to go with him. I want to go with him when he comes back. I've come too far.
sing it if you know it. It's an old James Cleveland song says, God is the joy. God is the joy and the strength of my life. He moves all pain. Anybody been in some painful situations? He He'll never leave me. Never to leave. He's a never. But what you got to do, I've got to fast. Stay in the narrow way. Oh, I'll keep my life clean every day. I want to go with him. When he comes back, I've come too far. that we have our being it's because of you that we exist we we exist to give you glory to give you honor to praise you to worship you because you're our all and all so thank you father for literally pressing your way into our lives bending our ears towards your lips so that we become recipients of a word that you've designed for us, one that you want to share with us, how you literally want to shape and transform us in this season. So consecrate us now to your service, Lord, by the power of grace divine. And let our souls look up with a steadfast hope and our wills be lost in thine. It's in the powerful and strong name of Jesus the Christ we do pray. And we all say together, amen. Amen. Well, we bless God for the way he continues to meet us in worship, even in virtual space. Well, we continue our journey through the Psalms or the Songs of Ascent. We pick up today with Psalm 123, Psalm 123. I want to read it from the New Revised Standard Version. It's a relatively short psalm, just four verses but one that I hope will indeed be a blessing to us. Psalm 123, the New Revised Standard Version says, To you I lift up my eyes, O you who are enthroned in the heavens. As the eyes of servants look to the hand of their master, as the eyes of a maid to the hand of her mistress, so our eyes look to the Lord our God until he has mercy on us. Have mercy upon us, O Lord, have mercy upon us, for we have had more than enough of contempt. Our soul has had more than its fill of the scorn of those who are at ease, of the contempt of the proud. Have mercy upon us, O Lord, have mercy upon us. 
I'd like to tag this next installment in our sermon series, Sound Check, Songs for Moving to a Higher Place. I want to tag this one, I Look to You. I Look to You. You may be seated even in the presence of God. In 2019, that songbird, Whitney Houston, released her seventh and final album, I Look to You. And the album included a single by the same name. The song, I Look to You, sings of hopelessness and the chance to find light. I Look to You touches the heart of many because Houston is essentially singing from her heart. Almost everyone has gone through a time of hardship and crisis. And almost everyone has prayed about wanting strength and guidance at some point in their lives. Uh, Whitney talks about looking to God for guidance. We must learn to have faith in the plans that the Lord would have for us. It is critical to point out that in the music video, she was intentional in keeping it as simple as possible. Whitney expressed in an interview that she was, uh, made that commitment because she wanted to show her humbleness unto the Lord. And so here in the 123rd Psalm, we see that much of our life is lived in between the times of God's promise and God's fulfillment. This is structurally so because we live between the first and second comings of our Lord Jesus Christ. Having the promise of the consummation of all things, we await its fulfillment. At the same time, there is a realized aspect to that promise since Jesus has already come some 2,000 years ago. Thus, the kingdom which he preached is both come and coming. And where we see demons cast out today and the sick healed, we see that the mercy of God, his kingdom, is in our midst. Nevertheless, we are waiting for the end of this age, and as we do, our faith grows as it is tested. Psalm 123 is really a cry for mercy. The very fact that the psalmist is asking for mercy means that he is not presently experiencing it. At the same time, he expects God to deliver and thus he prays, hounded by those who treat him and Israel with contempt and by the scorn of the proud, he cast himself before the Lord because he understands that only God can lift this oppression from him. From this brief prayer, we can learn how to pray during the between times. Commentators see this prayer as an individual lament that becomes a corporate lament in verse 2. The thought moves from our position before God to our prayer to God. And the reality is pandemic ha has been fighting for our attention and our focus, even though this season does not deserve our true attention and focus. In a society and culture where we give our attention to social media and 24-7 news media and alternative facts and what's happening on the local news and the rise of crime in our communities, the frustrations of life, legislators who are using all types of antics to rob black folks of the right to vote, there are a lot of things that are fighting for our attention and our focus. We're fighting the desire to always please other people. We have given our attention over to trying to figure out how we're going to make ends meet, how we're going to keep everything that we're attempting to juggle in the air, how we can be everything to everybody. And if you want to be able to look to God, you've got to make sure that your focus is in the right place. Your focus has to be in the right place because your life will always reflect what you have allowed to consume the majority of your attention and your focus I won't be long today so that we can come to the table I know you're getting ready for your afternoon cookouts but what I'm trying to shape for us today is even in wanting or hoping moments even in the moments between when God has promised something and when God actually fulfills it we have to fix our sight in the direction of the one upon whom we are waiting. 
What am I trying to say? Even in moments where we are waiting, even in moments where we are being oppressed, even in moments where we're being attacked on every side, we have to fix our sight upon the Lord, our God, and we cannot fall into the trap of looking around when God says we should be looking up. One of the challenges of redirecting our focus is that we might mess around and figure out that some of the things that we have allowed to consume our focus and our attention don't need our focus and our attention as much as we think they do. What if we discovered that situations and people and circumstances don't need as much space in our minds as we give them? What if we discover that if we fix our attention in the direction of God that God has already developed a resolution to everything around us that is attempting to consume our attention. What if I told you that God had already given you a victory and a promise that he was going to bring you out even before you walked into it? What if I told you he already knew how he was going to bring us out of pandemic and when he was going to return us to worship even before we stopped worshiping in the building so my focus has to be in the right place so that I don't miss how God is preparing me because I'm looking around and he wants me looking he wants me looking up so so what I'm really trying to shape for us is our focus our attention has to be in the right place I don't want us to mess around and return to in-person worship with wrong focus and misguided attention wrong focus misguided attention so I come back into the building carrying some of the same mess back into it that I carried out of it with me but expecting that God will do something larger bigger better I come back in expecting everybody else to help create and facilitate an atmosphere of worship for me but I've not taken the opportunity to focus my life and my mind in such a way that I don't have to wait for somebody else to pump and prime me When I come back to church, I can come back in shouting and dancing on my way in the door because of what God has done for me since the last time I was here. Can't come back with with, with wrong focus and and, and misguided attention. So so what what, what we really wrestle with is I only have two points for you today. I'm done. We come to the table. How do we look to God? How do we focus on God? We do that. We look to God by adjusting our position it's really simple it's really simple look what he says he says there in verses one and two he says to you I lift my eyes oh you who are enthroned in the heavens catch what he says he says I lift my I lift my eyes to you who are enthroned in the heavens he says just as the eyes of servants look to the hand of their master as the as the eyes of a maid to the hand of their mistress look what he says he says so our eyes look to the Lord our God until he has mercy on us. <laughs> you got to catch it. This thing will really preach itself. He says, uh, we, 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 I lift my eyes to the one who is enthroned, the one who is sitting on the throne of heaven. He says, I, I lift my eyes to the Lord our God. Uh, and, and I had to ask the psalmist, I said, how long are you going to lift your eyes to God? He says, I lift my eyes to God until he has mercy upon us. Y'all, that thing made me shout because he is essentially saying, my position, my focus, my alignment has been off. I've been focused on what's happening around me as the, as the psalmist is journeying uh, to Jerusalem for the festival and the feast. He says, I've got to refocus my vision. I've got to make sure that the position of where I am looking and what I am seeking is in order with what God wants in my life. He says, so I have adjusted my vision, the position of what I am looking toward. I am no longer looking outward, expecting that circumstance and situation dictate how I ought to feel and how I ought to praise. He says, no, I lift up my eyes to the one who is enthroned in heaven. He says, I'll keep lifting my eyes to God literally until God has mercy upon us. He says, I'll keep lifting my eyes towards heaven until God responds. And even when God responds, I'll keep lifting my eyes to the one who is enthroned in heaven because I told you a few weeks ago, he's where all of our help comes from. It comes from the Lord. 
Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. And I need somebody to understand that if you're getting ready to return to in-person worship, and even if you say, Pastor, I'm not coming back in the building for a while, that's all right. You still have to adjust your position. You've got to make sure that your eyesight is focused on the one who sits on the throne of heaven. You've got to make sure that your attention is focused on the king of kings and the lord of lords you've got to make sure that your attention is focused on calvary's cross so that god can get all of the glory he can get all of your praise he can get all of your worship not after he responds but i'm gonna give it to him until he responds which means i'm still waiting on him to do what i'm praying and i'm still looking for what he said he was going to do but even while i'm looking for god to do it can somebody help me preach and say I'll still fix my eyes on God so every now and then when life is burdening you you gotta fix you gotta fix your position so that the weight of life does not press you downward no you've got to fix your position so that life's challenges begin to press you upward so that you lift your eyes to the one who has the ability to do in and through you more than you could have ever expected so the psalmist says I lift my eyes I lift my eyes to the one who was enthroned in heaven I am literally lifting my eyes I'm adjusting my position so that my position is toward the Lord our God until he responds and not only is he adjusting his position lastly and I'm done he's amplifying his prayers He's amplifying his prayers. Watch, watch. Look at verses 3 and 4. I told you it's a short psalm. Have mercy upon us, O Lord. Have mercy upon us. For we have had more than enough of contempt. Have mercy upon us, O Lord. Have mercy upon us. Because we've had to deal with enough loss and sorrow. Have mercy upon us, O Lord. Have mercy upon us. Because we've had to deal with enough grief and pain. Have mercy upon us, O Lord. Have mercy upon us. Because I've been dealing with the weight of life and its challenges have mercy upon us oh lord have mercy upon us because i've had to deal with some difficult and hateful people have mercy upon us oh lord have mercy upon us because i've had more than enough of trying to do this have mercy upon us oh lord have mercy upon us because i'm sick and tired of being sick and tired the psalmist says my soul has had more than its fill of the scorn and i'm tired of the contempt of the proud he says have mercy upon us oh Lord have mercy upon us but this thing struck me because in verses 1 and 2 the psalmist said he's going to keep his eyes on God until God has mercy upon them but then down here in verses 3 and 4 he transitions into a prayer he says he goes from talking about his position to talking about his prayer he begins praying he says have mercy upon us oh Lord have mercy upon us for we have had more than enough of this condition tempt our soul has had more than its fill of the scorn of those who are at ease of the contempt of the proud and I need you to understand that right there in verse 3 there's a cry for mercy and he says I want you to understand that even when you come before a mighty God you first gotta ask for mercy have mercy upon us oh Lord have mercy in this the psalmist is simple and direct he says it twice because he wants to emphasize what he needs from God he says I understand that repetition is good so even if I gotta wake up every morning and keep saying the same prayer I'll wake up every morning and pray that thing until God responds because my position my eyes are fixed on him and I am amplifying the volume on my prayer life he says I want you to understand that not only am I going to keep repeating this prayer before God I'm literally going to stay before the throne of God until God God responds to me the the psalmist says I don't know when God is going to answer this prayer but I'm going to keep praying it until he does he says this prayer is continual he says I'm gonna keep sending this prayer up until mercy comes down he says I need you to know that you've got to pray in faith expecting God to act just like Jacob did and you've got to make a determination that God I'm not going to let you go until you bless me y'all this thing made my soul 
so happy because I need us to understand that we can't come back to worship unless we come with our prayer lives on fire because prayer is more than just something we throw around when we don't know what to do or say and prayer isn't a cop out or a scapegoat when we're talking to somebody prayer is more than a Facebook status anytime there's an issue happening in our land it's more than just a pastime designed to pacify Christians while we're sitting and waiting I need somebody to understand that prayer is your weapon prayer is your direct line of communication to the God who can accomplish whatever he chooses to accomplish in your life can somebody help me close this sermon and declare that prayer is where I go to get strength when I'm weak and prayer is where I get water when I'm thirsty and prayer is where I get bread when I'm hungry and prayer is where I go to get money when I'm down to my last and prayer is where I go to get joy for the journey and prayer is where I get peace in the middle of the process and prayer is where I go to laugh when life wants me to cry and prayer is where I go to dance even when I don't feel like it and prayer is where God cracks me open and he begins to pour brand new grace and brand new mercy all over my life every single day can somebody say prayer is my hope and prayer is my strength and prayer is my lifeline and prayer is my connection and prayer is my mercy and prayer is my saving grace and prayer is my therapy and prayer is my release and prayer is where I go to get what I need from the Lord our God y'all excuse me but my soul that caught on fire because when I think God speaks every time I call it I gotta keep amplifying my praise because when I think back over every prayer I pray I can't think of one time when God didn't answer my prayer so I'm gonna keep on praying because when I pray God hears me and when he hears me he will answer so open up your mouth throw your head back and begin to give God praise if you declare I believe that if you have a little talk with Jesus and tell him all about your troubles he will hear your faintest cry and he'll answer by and by and when you feel a little prayer will turn it then you know a little fire is burning open up your mouth throw your head back and shout just a little talk just a little talk with Jesus makes everything alright y'all excuse me but I can't let this thing go so I'll fix my eyes to the one who is enthroned in heaven and I'll turn up the volume on my prayer life because it is no secret what God can do what he's done for somebody else I believe he can do it for you open up your mouth throw your head back and give God praise I literally I literally adjust I adjust my position my eyes are fixed on the one who is enthroned in heaven and then I, I, I keep echoing my prayers literally until God responds why because my attention is fixed on him my focus is fixed on him even as I'm journeying life's path I keep my attention fixed on God because I recognize that everything I need done God has the capacity and the power to do it and not only does he have the capacity and the power to do it but how many can testify I believe that he will do it I believe that he will do it. Doors of the church are now open. Perhaps there's somebody watching today who says, Pastor Dow, my attention, my focus has been in all of the wrong places. 
But I'm watching today in virtual space and I recognize that I need to adjust the position of my life. I need to accept Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. I need to literally invite him to come into my heart, to come into my life, to save me, to change me, to live in me. If that's you, you're, you're, you're watching today, you know you need to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior for the very first time. I want you to log on to joinpleasantgrove.org, joinpleasantgrove.org. Today, you can be in relationship with this God who can have infinite mercy upon us. Secondly, you're watching today. You're watching today. You say, Pastor, I need to hit the reset button on my relationship with God. I literally need to start over anew and afresh. I've made some choices, some decisions, some mistakes, and today I need to recommit my life to God. If that's you, if that's you, log on to joinpleasantgrove.org. Joinpleasantgrove.org. Today's your day to recommit your life to God. I want you to log on even now, joinpleasantgrove.org. Thirdly and finally, you feel the spirit of the Lord leading you to anchor, to connect, to become a part of the Pleasant Grove Church family. I want you to know I'd love to be your pastor. All of the amazing people connected with our church would love to welcome you as part of our family. If that's you, you know that this is the place where the Lord wants you to anchor, to plant, to connect. Log on to joinpleasantgrove.org right now. We're waiting on you, waiting on you to make a decision for the Lord Jesus Christ today. One that will literally change your life. And I want you to know there's nothing better than knowing Jesus Christ. Come on, choir. Come on, real big. Come on, as we prepare to come to the table, there's nothing better. Nothing better. Oh, that knowing, knowing Jesus. Jesus. Oh, come on, he will pick you up. He will pick you up. And he'll turn, and turn your life around. You want to know. You want to know him. Come on, log on to the website. Get to know him. Get to know him. Come on, real big, real big, real big, right now. Right now. Today, just come. Come on, one more time before we come to the table. There's nothing better. We prepare our hearts, we prepare our minds now to come to the Lord's table. This opportunity that we have each and every month to remember the death, burial, resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Remembering the sacrifice that he made on Calvary's cross oh so many years ago for each and every one of us that we may have life and have life more abundantly. So when we come to this table, we come renewing our covenant relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, asking for forgiveness of our sins in word and thought and deed, asking that he would cleanse us from all unrighteousness and literally come with our hearts prepared to focus in on the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. There is no greater love than what Jesus did for us. That he literally, he wasn't killed. He laid down his life for us. So that we could experience newness of life. So that we could be reconciled back into right relationship with God. We come today preparing ourselves to renew our covenant with God. So even now, as you see there on your screen, I want us to recite together our church covenant and we read together having been led as we believe by the spirit of God to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior and on the profession of our faith having been baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit we do now in the presence of God 
angels and this assembly most solemnly and joyfully enter into covenant with one another as one body in Christ. We engage therefore by the aid of the Holy Spirit to walk together in Christian love, to strive for the advancement of this church in knowledge, holiness, and comfort, to promote its prosperity and spirituality, to sustain its worship, ordinances, discipline, and doctrines, to contribute cheerfully and regularly to the support of the ministry, the expenses of the church, the relief of the poor, and the spread of the gospel through all nations. We also engage to maintain family and secret devotion, to religiously educate our children, to seek the salvation of our kindred and acquaintances, to walk circumspectly in the world, to be just in our dealings, faithful in our engagements, and exemplary in our deportment, to avoid all tattling, backbiting, and excessive anger, to abstain from the sale and use of intoxicating drinks as a beverage, and to be zealous in our efforts to advance the kingdom of our Savior. We further engage to watch over one another in brotherly love, to remember each other in prayer, to aid each other in sickness and distress, to cultivate Christian sympathy and feeling and courtesy in speech, to be slow to take offense, but always ready for reconciliation and mindful of the rules of our Savior to secure it without delay. We moreover engage that when we remove from this place, we will as soon as possible unite with some other church where we can carry out the spirit of this covenant and the principles of God's word. Amen. I want to invite you now to gather your family and to prepare your elements as we ready ourselves to come to the Lord's table. symbolic though they may be. May you transform them and give them profound spiritual meaning and impact in our lives even now. Father, forgive us of our sins, those in word and thought and deed. Forgive us of the ways that we've sinned against you, displeased you. Father, we ask that you would continue to transform us, to, to remake us, to remold us, so that every day we look like more what you've destined for us to look like and we continue growing into the people that you would have us to become. It's in the strong and powerful name of Jesus, the resurrected Christ, that we do pray. And we all said together, amen. Well, on the night in which Jesus was betrayed, he was there with his disciples. He took a loaf of bread, he blessed it, he broke it, he distributed it among them, saying that this is my body which is broken for you. So we break and eat together as they did that night. short time later Jesus took the cup saying this is representative of my blood which is shed for you and without the shedding of his blood there would be no remission no forgiveness of sins that's why we sing what can wash away our sins it's nothing but the blood of Jesus and what can make us whole again it's nothing but the blood of Jesus let us drink together as they did that night says that after they ate, after they drank, they sang a hymn and went out to the Mount of Olives. Come on, praise team. There is no greater love Jesus went to Calvary to save a wretch like you and me. That's love. That's love. Come on, come on. Jesus went. Jesus went to Calvary to save a wretch. Hey! 
for you and me Until that day when we'll all gather at 